everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am so excited for this video because I am going to be talking about my favorite books of 2018. There are so many good books in this pile. Like there are so many good books that I read in 2018 that I'm just really really excited to basically gush for an entire video. So these are in particular order. So number one is my favorite and then going down the list. So my number one book for 2018 should come at no surprise and that is Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J. Maas. I absolutely love this book. This is the seventh book in the Throne of Glass series and it was so good. Such an epic finale to the story. It was so, so good. I absolutely loved it. I'd say my favorite is Queen of Shadows just because that's really where the story just takes a 180 and just turns and that's really where you get just such fantastic character development um, and that's where we're really introduced more to my favorite character Manon. So just all in all fantastic book. Highly anticipated for the past two years and I'm just I really really enjoyed it. So enough about Kingdom of Ash. So my second favorite book of 2018 is Obsidio by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. I've already read this twice this year. I read the first one. I read the hard copy of it when it was first released back in like February or March sometime at the beginning of the year and then I listened to the audiobook. Uh, I think I want to say like around October or something when Kevin was listening to the audiobook I just decided to pick it up because I've heard the audiobook is so great and It's true. Like I'm so glad I picked it up I kind of want to re-listen to Illuminae and Gemina on audiobook because it is so Freaking cool. There's an entire cast of characters. There's sound effects just the way it narrates it It was a great finale to a trilogy and I'm sad that it's over, but I loved it. Coming in at number three is a book series, and that is the Bloodline series by Rochelle Mead. I love this series. So I had been putting it off because I adored the Vampire Academy series, and I just, you know how spin-off series can be sometimes? Like, you never know. You could be highly disappointed, and it can just ruin your favorite series. So I just been putting it off and putting it off and then finally Hannah told me like no we really need to read it we'll read it for a muggle studies book club I love this series so much I don't have the first two and I'm not holding up the last one because I all of them are five out of five stars except for the ruby circle so my favorite book in this one I have to say is the fiery heart I adored the fiery heart so much then it is silver shadows then the indigo spell then Bloodlines, then The Golden Lily, and then The Ruby Circle. So unfortunately, all of these books were 5 out of 5 stars except for The Ruby Circle. It just didn't flow well with the book. It wasn't a good finale. It was kind of a bad ending. It wrapped up too quickly, but otherwise, this book book series is phenomenal so you can overlook the last one I mean the last one's not bad we still get great banter and character wit and it still has a good like it's still it's still a good book I think I gave it like a 3.5 or a 4 out of 5 stars it just because these are so fantastic the sixth one was just a little bit just lacking because these were so fantastic. The next book, I don't own a physical copy of it. I listened to the audiobook and that is Before the Devil Breaks You by Libba Bray. This is the third book in the Diviners series, I believe. Yeah, it's a series. So fantastic. This was a series that I was kind of hesitant about starting. The Diviners just blew me away. Um, it's historical fiction. It really got me into historical fiction. It's set in New York in the 1920s, so that's really, really cool. And it's just about a group of characters that have um, magical abilities, just unique abilities, and they call themselves diviners. Now, Lair of Dreams was my least favorite so far. Um, it was a little slower at first, and I just, I didn't like it as much, even though it was still really good. But then, Before the Devil Breaks You was just 
phenomenal. It just so good. Five out of five stars. The characters really start to come together. The story comes together because there are so many different point of views in this book and as you know I don't like too many point of views in my books. I feel like it muddies the story but this is an exception. Libba Bray does so fantastic with each character. You end up caring about each individual character. So the first one is more limited towards like Evie and Sam. And then the second one we follow still just kind of like you get more characters, but you don't really understand why they're there. And then finally, before the devil breaks you, it, everything starts to come together. It's very eerie. It's kind of, um, I'd say it's young adult thriller spooky. So if you want to read something more suspenseful and spooky, but you don't want to venture into horror, I'd say The Diviners is a great book series to kind of dip your toes into. The next book I have is a contemporary, and as you know, I'm not a huge fan of young adult contemporary, but this book I adored. I, once again, five out of five stars, and that is Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Albertalli. We read it for our Muggle Studies book club, Oh, it was so good. I've reread it since then, and the movie adaptation is phenomenal. So good. It's like they basically took word for word from the book to the movie. Of course, they had a few variations here and there, but otherwise, great movie adaptation. And it was just really, really good. I adored it. So we follow our main character, Simon. He is gay and he basically is his journey about coming out and navigating through school. But what's great is that he and this other boy named Blue send each other love emails and they don't know who each other are and we get to see those emails, which is really cool. I love the mixed media in here and the characters were fantastic and there was great diversity and representation. So highly, highly recommended. If you like contemporary, then I think you'll really love this book. And if you don't like contemporary, then give this one a shot. The next book I have is Adult Fantasy, and that is Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. So this book is quite unique and different. It is definitely adult. There is strong language, there's a violence, there are graphic scenes so just kind of keep that in mind but it's the plot it just sticks with you and the characters really stick with you like it took a while to get into the story just because I'm not used to reading a lot of adult fantasy I read a lot of fantasy but more young adults so the writing style was really different with Nevernight, and it took me a little while to kind of get into it. There were a lot of footnotes that he put in, and that would, you'd have to go from like, you'd see the asterisks, and you'd go from what he was saying to the footnotes, and then back into the story. So that took a little getting used to, so I ended up listening to it on audiobook and it went so much better because you didn't know when it was a footnote. Like, you weren't stopping reading in the middle of a paragraph to read the footnote because it just flowed as one. So the audiobook really, really made it so much better and I really enjoyed it. Next, I have another book that I wasn't sure I was going to like, but I ended up adoring it, and that is Ready Player One by Ernest Cline. This book is so cool. I love the video game aspect of it, and once again, great book to movie adaptation. It is very different than the book, but I like what they did. I liked the variations of it because there are some chapters in this book that would be kind of boring to watch cinematically. So I didn't have issues with how they changed it. I thought it was really cool. The plus that they added, I really enjoyed it. So I ended up giving this a five out of five stars. Audiobook is fantastic. It's narrated by Will Wheaton. So good. So I highly, highly recommend this one. And the last book that I have to share with you for my best books of 2018 actually shocked me because 
I hadn't given any of the books a 5 out of 5 stars, I think, except for this one, and that is City of Heavenly Fire by Cassandra Clare. So the Mortal Instruments series, I just had trouble getting into it. I think it's because Clary and Jace are not my favorite characters. I've said that numerous times before. I know, I know, I'm really sorry, but my favorite characters are Simon and Isabel and Magnus Bain, and there's just something about these characters in City of Heavenly Fire that I absolutely adored, and the plot was so good. I just, uh, there was just such a, the stories come a long way from City of Bones to City of Heavenly Fire, and I really, really love this one. I thought the ending was spectacular. I loved the epilogue. I love how she also kind of twists it into the infernal devices a little bit. So it's just, it's really, really good. And I'm kind of shocked that I loved it so much because the other books I liked, but they weren't like, oh my god, this is fantastic. But then when I read City of Heavenly Fire, I was like, wow, this is really, really good. I'm really glad I, re I finished this series and I really, really enjoyed it. Okay, well that is it for my favorite books for 2018. I had a lot of good books that I read in 2018, which is why I'm not doing a worst books of 2018 because I just... I had a lot of good books and I don't really have any content for it so might as well just stick with the good books, right? Comment down below, let me know your favorite books of 2018. That is it for this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time. Bye!